Ave Maria. Dear brothers and sisters, we are the body of Christ and Mary is our mother. And this is so important to us that we understand just what a very special mother she is. The title for, or the theme for this afternoon, the first part of the meditation, is Pray for us sinners now. No. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Both are good. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Isn't it wonderful to be able to say that and know she's listening? Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Right now, she's praying for each one of us because we're asking her to, because she wants to. Why would she want to pray for us? Why would she want to pray for you and me? Well, recently in the liturgy, Jesus said, Beware, this is a wicked generation. And don't be alarmed because he is preaching his good news to people who are listening, people of this generation, as 2,000 years ago, who are listening to him. We need to hear the gospel, we need to hear the good news, because without the gospel, without the good news, there's only death and destruction at work, wickedness. We can say there is a lot of good in the world, and God does use that. But what's so important for us is to realize that we're having a tough time. It's a huge challenge that is before us. And so it's important we ask Holy Mary to pray for us. She knows what it's like. Just think the moment when she heard that God required her to be the mother of her son. She was deeply disturbed. She was deeply disturbed and asked how this could happen the Holy Spirit will come down upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And once she heard those beautiful words, she said unreservedly, yes, let it be done to me according to thy word. And she's praying for us now because we too have a difficult time. We have a difficult time ahead of us. And she's encouraging us to know the need for the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit every day of our lives. For the power of the Most High to come down upon each one of us so that Jesus may live in our hearts through faith. It's so important that the Son of God, the Word made flesh, dwells within us. And it's so important that each one of us knows Jesus and knows the loving Father and knows the Holy Spirit. It's God's will. We heard at Mass this morning in the first reading, Galatians, that Paul prayed. He prayed for the community that God would give them a spirit of wisdom and understanding so that they could know God in his fullness. Every day we need the Holy Spirit to come into us, to give us wisdom to know the Father, to know his tremendous love for the world in all its brokenness, and especially to know Jesus, the Word made flesh, because we have a difficult time to face. In Matthew chapter 24, uh, Jesus says, Take care. Take care that no one deceives you. They will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars. Do not be alarmed, for this is something that must happen, but the end will not be yet. For nation will fight against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes here and there. 
All this is only the beginning of the birth pangs. A frightening picture, unless of course we're listening to Jesus, listening to the good news, and listening to our Blessed Mother and asking her prayers. Pray for us. We need her to pray for us because there's something essential that each one of us needs to be successful. Are you successful? Am I successful as a Christian? Are we successful? But we fail, don't we? That's why the confessionals are open. Because we fall, we fail. But success is about constantly listening, seeking the will of God, and doing God's will in the power of the Holy Spirit, constantly being strengthened by grace, and knowing that there's a certain quality that comes to us. When the grace of God comes, we are able to persevere, to endure. This is something that must happen, he says, but blessed are those who persevere to the end. That is success, persevering to the end. A number of years ago, uh, when I was at the college, Radcliffe College in Leicester, in the Christmas holiday I used to go to Florida to preach uh, an Advent retreat, Triduum, before Christmas to the basic Christian communities. The second year I was there, the chaplain of the uh, Manatee Memorial Hospital uh, had a fall, broke his hip, so I was asked to do the hospital duties each day. And I'd be given a list of people to go to see, hear their confession, and give them Holy Communion. There's a lot of Eucharistic ministers going round. And I'd be going down the corridors with my little list. And I paused at one stage, looking to see the name and the room to go to. And this voice said, don't you come in here. Get away from me. And I looked around and I saw this poor, youngish person lying in bed. So I looked in and he said, don't come in here. I said, is that an invitation? I was so startled. Anyway, uh, he said, don't come in here. I don't want to see any priests ever in my life again. So I said, why, what happened? Something's happened, something's disturbed you. And he told me a very sad story of how as an altar boy, uh, he, he'd been abused and ridiculed and all sorts of things by a couple of priests and he vowed never to go near a church again. So I said, why did you call me? He said, Father, I'm dying. I thought, it's good he's called me Father. He said, I'm dying. I said, can you remember any prayers? He said, there's only one I can remember. I'm trying to recall it. It's the Hail Mary. And he started to say the Hail Mary. You know, my voice is going to break in a minute. It was most emotional moment. Uh, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And I said, how often have you said that prayer? He said, I've tried to remember it for the last three years uh, since my life was so far out of order. He was dying of AIDS. So you can guess what sort of a life he'd led, promiscuous life. But Our Lady is praying for us always. And we may think that people have gone off the rails even, gone far away from God's grace. But she's always praying for us, particularly when we ask her. But just imagine that story of this person, John Paul his name was, and he died about four days later. I was able to receive him into the church, give him Holy Communion, and we had a little mass in his room with his mother and uh, two brothers and a sister before he died. But isn't that a wonderful work of Our Lady, praying for us? She's always wanting us to come back, come back to her son, because uh, she has a very special role to play. And she wants us then to persevere, not to give in. However bad the journey gets, however bad the sufferings are, 
She wants us to stand firm to the end with her intercession, knowing that if we keep our eyes on her son Jesus, if we're strong in our faith, uh, he will see us through to salvation. So she has a very vital role to pray in our lives. But remember, if we don't have difficulties and sufferings, we probably won't persevere, we probably won't grow. It's those hard times, isn't it, when all of us probably have grown most in our life, when our faith has been tested, when our families have been tested, when our vocation as Christians has been tested. We've perhaps almost given up, but we've cried out. And certainly as a priest, 52 years a priest, the number of times I've called upon the help of Our Lady in time of temptation and difficulties, and she's a most wonderful mother and a powerful intercessor. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.